This week, I'm making use of my Anycubic Photon Mono printer and the new files from Loot Studios to create this awesome looking forest scatter terrain and this miniature with a glowing rune. That's this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. A while back, Loot Studios reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in working with them on a video. And I was really excited because I really do like the quality of their files and their miniatures. And also, I had received the uh, Anycubic Photon Mono not too long ago. And I thought, what better time than to hop on board and see what I could do with one of their monthly subscription packages. So this month's package is the Oasis. It's got a lot of really cool themed miniatures and scatter terrain in it. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to create some really cool scatter terrain for any type of enchanted forest. I've got a shrine. I've got a really cool homage to this month's uh, file pack, which is the Oasis. And I even took one of their miniatures and I put a glowing rune in his heart. So that's what we're going to do this week. And if you're ready, let's go grab those supplies and let's get crafting. I wanted to kick this video off by printing off some of the miniatures from the new Loot Studios release the oasis and i took some of the flowers that they had in the scatter terrain section of their release and i scaled them down to three different sizes i want to see just what this any cubic printer could do um, when i scaled those down and i was very amazed at the amount of quality that loot studios has in their miniatures and what was retained in those prints so i took all of them i set them on some paper and all i'm trying to do is just kind of sketch out a rough idea of what I want these three separate pieces of terrain to look like. I'm going to make a first one here that looks like a little oasis with this gem in the middle. The second one is going to be this little uh, statue head with a tree hanging over the top of it. And the last one is going to be an elven uh, like way shrine with this elven statue, stone statue here right in the middle. Now when I carved all of this out, I used a pair of pliers, I used my fingers, and you know, it leaves a lot of little tears. I want it to be more smooth like stone, so selecting the proper clay sculpting tool, you can see it allows me to kind of shave off sections of the foam. Then from here, I just took a one inch piece of foam and made a little bit of a mound out of it. We're going to add a lot of flowers around this when we're done. And for this piece right here, I just went online, I looked up some elven runes drew them on here, and then using this hot pin, we can carve those in. Once we got that all set, a little bit of hot glue to hold that in place, and you see we're gonna place the shrine of that uh, elven statue there, right in the middle. All right, now this one inch piece of foam, I cut this section right out, and the large chunk there on the bottom, we're gonna add these uh, cast pieces right here into the side. Those are by Woodland Scenics, it's their rock molds. And I'm going to place those all around this piece. Now to reach the top of this piece of scatter, I'm going to have a few little steps. And then at the very top, I'm going to put like a little flagstone, uh, like patio almost at the top. Now for the oasis section, I just went to the proxon to cut this out. You don't have to use a proxon. You can obviously use an alpha. There's no exact measurements here. But to have the little water section going around the island, I did use this hot wire knife to burn this out. I'm doing this underneath a 550 CFM hood with a mask on to keep all these fumes away from me. So you're going to want to do this outside if you don't have that available. Now everybody knows I love this tool that I made here on the channel. This is just to kind of smooth out that section that I had burned. I'm going to cover a lot of this up with some small craft rocks and some sand as you can see right here. And that's just simply some PVA glue that I mixed in with the rocks. All right, now for painting this up, this is a dove gray that I painted all of the stone with to kind of keep it uniform throughout uh, all the scatter terrain. And now I'm just taking a little bit of a yellow ochre to um, add some yellow and a little dark gray. You can get crazy here with these colors. You can add uh, maroon, blue, anything you want because we're gonna add a black wash over the whole thing. It's gonna really knock down those colors. And um, once that dries, we can go back and as you can see, just do a nice heavy dry brush of that dove gray over everything. And it really has a nice realistic look. 
uh, for that stone. All right, here are all of the materials that I used in this video, from the pigments to the turf and the paints and inks as well. Now, this brush right here, I use that for all of my glue when I'm applying it, when I don't have it in a spray bottle. That's just a little watered down glue. And I'll put a link up above to my fireball uh, diorama that I did not too long ago. And it shows a really good technique of layering up all of these different pieces of, you know, flocking. It looks a lot better, in my opinion, than just doing one color of flocking and, you know, going between fine and coarse turf as well. Now, for this paver section, you know, I didn't want to go with individual bricks or pavers, so I just drew that in with a pen. And all I did was use the back, obviously, of the paintbrush to add some definition to those and some moss between the cracks. So these are the miniatures I printed from this month's subscription from Loot Studios and a perfect time to let you know about this video sponsor. Loot Studios is a monthly subscription service and every month they have a different theme. This month it's the Oasis and these models can be printed off in two different scales, 32 and 75 millimeter. All the models come pre-supported so if you're new to 3D printing it's a snap to get these ready for your tabletop games. Now. The models, they're wicked detailed. I was really impressed with the detail on these models, even when I shrunk them down to a really small scale on the printer. Now, for new subscribers, you'll receive an additional tavern-themed welcome pack with a ton of different miniatures to print off and terrain pieces for any tavern that you're gonna create, as well as they provide busts and tutorials on how to paint those, and they provide lore and bonus maps for all the players. Subscribers also gain access to their community, so check them out. I'll put a link to their site in the description below. All right, so this is just a little bit of epoxy that we're gonna mix together. I added just a little bit of green and a little bit of blue into that. And once while that's curing, I'm gonna go and just start attaching some of these painted miniatures to all of the terrain. And I like to use hot glue, it's quick and easy. Uh, there's no reason to have to wait for tacky glue or something like that to dry on these pieces. All right, now I had a little uh, mishap with my World War Scenics spray glue. Uh, I guess I didn't clean the nozzle well enough, so I had to put some of that into a little container and paint it on. And I'm gonna apply some flocking just with my hands because I'm gonna have miniatures all over this. And it's probably gonna destroy it if I use the static grass applicator. And you can see it looks really good, you know, without it right there anyway. So now this piece, I'm not going to have miniatures all over it, so I decided to break out the static grass applicator. And these are just a bunch of pieces of uh, you know plants and stuff that I received from some viewers, some items that I picked up when I was on vacation with my family as well. And I wanted some more plants. Now these are just you know regular aquatic plants. Um, I really don't like the way they look color-wise. So Vallejo had sent me some airbrush paints. We're going to break out the airbrush and dip into a bunch of these paints and I'm going to basically hit it with a dark green, a lighter green, and then a yellow to, uh, to achieve this look right here. And all I'm using is some tacky glue, poke a hole in that with this clay sculpting tool and stick them right in place. Now breaking out the Vallejo water texture, just stipple this on with an old brush and it adds a really nice wavy look to the water here for the oasis. Now we gotta do one of the miniatures for this as well. We're gonna take this guy right here, hit him up with a really dark brown, layer him up lighter and lighter brown until we eventually hit it with a gray. And we wanna add some LEDs to this miniature and make his heart or that rune glow. So we're gonna take this holder for a CR2032 battery. We're gonna mount it to the bottom, stick the wiring up through. Using some of that World War Scenic uh, adhesive, we're gonna turn that wire into a vine and wrap it around the miniature's leg up to the back of the heart, which we had placed some tape over so that the clear resin for the printer uh, would glow nice and green. And I used a green LED here as well. So once we have this set in place, we'll add a little glue and a little bit more flocking over it and you'll never see it. 
All right, and then the finishing touches, we're just gonna throw a few static grass tufts on the base. Uh, this spot right here on his head, I uh, was just calling for a little piece of a tuft. And uh, I also took a few tufts around the shield that he has, and I also placed one uh, on his ankle as well. All right, so here's some awesome scatter terrain for your next magical forest encounter. If you want to subscribe to Loot Studios, I'll put a link in the description below where you can do that, and also a link where you can pick up a Anycubic Photon Mono for yourself. And while you're down there, please consider liking and subscribing, and heading on over to Patreon. It's support there that really helps fund the channel and keeps it going. And I'd like to just say that Patreon, uh, for me, started out right as this community of crafters. And over the past few weeks, it's really, um, for me, has grown into uh, a family. And in my heart, I really feel that that way. Um, you guys are really awesome. Everybody that's over there, um, I really appreciate everything that you guys uh, do for me and for the channel. So, all right, until next time, I'll see you around.